gonna quit my baby if she don't stop cheating. Oh, no. Sorry, I have no monitor. I'm not gonna sing without a monitor, I'm sorry. One, two, nothing. There it is. There it is. Could you bring it up a little bit? All right. Let's just all come in together. One, two, three. Five. I'm going to quit my baby if she don't stop cheating me. If she don't stop cheating that line You know I'd rather be dead Rather be dead Than be worried for me Do you welcome in Rhodes uh, With a little bit of delay well, You should have been here last year As headliner But had some trouble with your hands so I, broke Yes, your hands. I slipped on ice and broke my hand but it's fully back now, yeah. so. But uh, this broken hand couldn't stop you. Now, you've been in the studio recording Calling All Blues uh, during this time. Yeah, yeah, I had a cast on my hand, but I could still play slide guitar, so. I finished it with a few slides, so I was. So it was good for us fans. Uh, because it made you play slide again, but you hadn't done it for... No, I hadn't some... done it for quite a while, yes. Now you're touring Germany. Uh, you've been playing here several times before. Uh, what about your experiences over here in Germany? I've always loved it here. Uh, I love the, the country of Germany. It's a beautiful place. Love the people and the architecture. And I started doing uh, shows over here in the... Uh, let's see, it would be the mid-80s, I think, or maybe even early 80s, with my band, The Pleasure Kings, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'd done that show, Oni Filter, a few times, mm -hmm. and I've toured a lot here. I like it. Guitar in my hand And I'm gonna jump the blues for you Got my guitar in my hand And I'm gonna jump the blues for you Well, it just got in your town It just thrilled you through and through I know all you people need a shot of Red Hot Blues guitar I know all you people People need a shot of a red hot blues guitar. Well, I aim to stir your soul. Well, I don't care. Now you're back in presenting uh, Call All Blues, uh, your new album, which isn't that new anymore, but uh, it's uh, kind of a musical journey through different styles, different eras in a way, and you're bringing it all together. Uh, the common thread is your songwriting in a way. Yes, it is on that album, yes, because uh, musically it touches on a lot of different styles from a lot of different areas in the United States, but um, lyrically uh, it's, uh, well, they're just all songs about my life basically, because that's the way I write pretty much is autobiography uh, biography type lyrics you know so that's kind of a diary in a way yeah loosely yeah uh, you've told me Matt, that you started playing rock and roll in your very early years and your mother didn't like it that much well rock and roll was uh, when I started when I wanted to first play guitar it was right at the beginning of rock and roll when 
uh, people like Elvis and Little Richard and Fats Domino and Chuck Berry were the stars, you know. And uh, most parents of teenagers were appalled by that music. They didn't like it. And my mother said, I said, that's what I'm going to do. And my mother said, oh, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> so I had to fight through my teenage years, to, you know, to, <clears throat> to be able to play it. But then by the time I graduated from high school, I went right in, for the following year, I started uh, a band called Room Full of Blues, and the rest is history. You mentioned Chuck Berry. He was kind of responsible that you discovered the blues? Yes, because uh, his very first record, Maybelline, uh, my brother had that record, and he was 10 years older than me. And the flip side was uh, in the wee wee hours. That was the first blues I ever heard. What's the attracting thing of the blues for you? Well, I tell you, at that age, I didn't know what it was. You wouldn't think something slow would draw a young person in, but I was maybe 10 years old at the most. And when I heard that, just the feeling of that slow blues, the slow blues just really felt great to me, too. And guitarist Dwayne Eddy, uh, who, you know, was known for more kind of rockin' uh, guitar instrumentals. He had a song on his first album around the same time called uh, 330 Blues. And, uh, and I, I, you know, that drove me crazy. I loved that. It was a guitar blues instrumental. So, you know, I just immediately fell for it, the sound, the feeling. Don't come around here no more Looking for my sympathy I just ain't got the time, girl And you're too blind to see You're just about as welcome As a teardrop in the sea It took so long to realize How bad you were for me Don't waste your time by thinking I'd ever take you back Cause you're just about as welcome as a fatal heart attack You were a sweetheart when I met you At least you seemed to be An angel sent from heaven I had to look up to see My plans for us were big, but your respect for me was small. And now I'm looking down, and I can't see you at all. We were going nowhere but to ruin and to rag. And you're just about as welcome as fatal heart attack. exploring different territories of the blues but uh, to me it, it seems like that your heart is closer to the more traditional styles of blues swing elements a little bit of jazz and uh, putting it to it and you kind of modernizing it and putting it put your stamp on it well I guess you could say that I uh, I very early on in my life recognize the similarities between early jazz and blues. Um, a lot of, you know, Louis Armstrong was a fabulous blues trumpet player. He sang blues. He sang quite a few blues songs. And he played the best blues. And uh, many jazz musicians were great blues players in the old days, in the 20s, 30s, 40s. And uh, when Bop came in, it started going in a different way and becoming more modern, more abstract. 
and it kind of left the blues behind. But I love the period of American music from the, the 20s through the 40s the most, and 50s and 60s for some music, but for jazz, the 20s and 30s were my favorite time. And I hear the influence in blues everywhere in that kind of jazz. Talking with you, it's inevitable, but talking about the guitar player, Duke Robillard, who played also with and for other people like Tom Waits or Bob Dylan. What kind of experience was that? Um, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun to to play someone else's music and uh, and be up to the challenge of trying to give them what they want and uh, and you know it's just fun. You know, I was also in the fabulous Thunderbirds for two and a half years and and that that was a good experience too. But I always want to go back to do my own projects, my own style, my own music. You know. And how far do those in, uh, experiences, like working with Tom Waits or Bob Dylan or with the bands you mentioned, uh, also kind of uh, influence you uh, doing your own stuff? Well, with the Thunderbirds, um, it, it had some influence on me because what they were doing was very similar to what I was doing at the same time which was, uh, you know, in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, as far as Tom Waits and um, Dylan, um, they didn't so much influence the way I approach music, but it did open up my eyes to certain things about their music that, that I learned about, you know. <laughs> 